Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. Uh, we will get started with uh, what is officially our final Weave Online user group uh, meetup for the season. Uh, if this is your first time, then welcome to our Weave Online user group. These are seasonal series uh, that uh, Stacy here, our community manager, uh, ardently puts together, bringing in lots of great guest speakers and uh, featuring our own speakers on a variety of topics around open source, GitOps, usually the Kubernetes space. Um, my name is Tomo Nakahara. Sorry, there's a little bit of noise outside. Um, I run the developer experience team here at WeWorks, which we'll chat a little bit about if you've never heard of us. Um, but thanks for joining. So I put in the chat, uh, we put a little poll because um, we have something that we're sharing today that um, we're kind of doing through two phases. The first phase is uh, kind of designing it for people who are already familiar with uh, the open source project Flux. Um, and then later we'll do another phase uh, and other talks for people who might be discovering GitOps and Flux through this VS Code uh, extension. Um, and so just be forewarned, I see there's like a 60-40 split right now. So for those of you who are just like barely ever heard of GitOps, haven't used Flux again, um, we really welcome that you joined, but just heads up that like, we're gonna go a little bit in the weeds. So um, um, it's okay. And in fact, let us know if you're like, hey, I don't even know what's going on. Um, we'll definitely be doing more of a beginner session in the future. Um, so with that, um, we'll be sharing today that um, there is this Flux project, which is open source and in the CNCF. Uh, we've been an incubation project and very, very close to reaching graduation. We're going through the various steps, it's very exciting. Um, and Flux is one of the premier projects that provides this concept of GitOps, um, which is uh, kind of having a single source of truth, um, often in a repo, not necessarily in Git, but fairly popularly in Git. And the um, manifest in that repo sort of explains to the rest declaratively, this is what the state of the cluster should look like. So um, with the technology of Kubernetes and this project Flux, um, of various parts work together to say like, if something goes down or, or if there's a bad actor, it can know what the state is by looking to that, that manifest and, and um, kind of automatically, automatically um, sort of building out the, the cluster as it should be. Um, so that's like a really, really quick um, explanation. Um, for those of you, hopefully you are here because you are well aware of that. And hopefully you're excited because we have this new project where you, if you are using Visual Studio Code from Microsoft, VS Code, um, now we have this extension that um, we will soon put in the marketplace <clears throat> that will help you stay in one place in your ID and do all your GitOps magic without hopefully doing too much context switching. So if you are well-versed with VS Code, we really hope that you'll be excited about this. Um, so today's session is very much about um, focusing on you, the Flux users, um, showing you what we've done so far and getting your feedback um, on what we can do to um, improve this and, and get it to the marketplace. So we really, really appreciate your time here. Um, and we'd love to hear your feedback um, about this either during or after this session. So I hope that's clear and I'm seeing more responses to the poll. So I'm hoping as I see new people join that it's popping up for you and letting you know that today's talk is a little bit focused on existing Flux users. Um, all right, and so with us, we have uh, Kingdon Barrett, who is um, one of our team members at, uh, in the developer experience team, and uh, we'll be walking you through that. So before we go through that, just letting you know, if you are brand new to this and you've never heard of WeWorks, um, we are a company that is a startup based in various locations around the world. Um, we've been growing and um, having a really exciting time, especially around this project, uh, Flux. Um, and if you've heard, uh, Flagger is another project that was folded into that, that expands even further that GitOps methodology to be able to do things like canary deployments, right? So being able to um, take Prometheus metrics, for example, and to see if your um, canary deployment is going well and either um, continuing or automatically rolling back based on metrics that come in. And it's using all those foundations of Kubernetes and Flux. Um, and in, we have many, many more projects, many more than are listed here. 
we were just chatting with um, Ring Central that has added themselves to our um, adopters list of Flux and it's exciting to for them to say like, well, we knew we trusted WeWorks because WeWorks had done all these great projects in the past. And so Flux was just an evolution of that, of, of something that we wanted to use. So that was fantastic validation of all this great stuff that we're doing to provide hopefully great user experiences for our many um, audiences in different areas. So um, check these out. Um, some are in the CNCF, some are on GitHub, um, and especially want to shout out to um, our product, which is called Weave GitOps, which is built on Flux. So if any of you are like just getting started on this GitOps journey and you're like, yes, this is great, but we're an enterprise company and we really, really want to make sure we have a product that's solid and supported, um, you can check out Weave GitOps or ask us questions about it. Uh, again, it's built on Flux and we have more and more enterprise users using it. So it's very, very exciting. So Weave Docs, Weave.works is our website. So check us out and let me know if you have any questions. So a little bit of housekeeping. Again, I mentioned um, Kingdon uh, will be walking you through um, this extension. Um, and I'm Tomo. Um, these usually uh, can be as short as 30 minutes. Um, and then you know we extend if there's a lot of questions, but we have a hard stop at 60. Um, and I think at this point, everybody's well aware of Zoom. Uh, I think the main thing is we engage with you in the chat channel. So please make sure to um, chat to everyone so that people can see your questions and answers. A lot of people get pretty chatty. Um, unless you have something really burningly private, then of course you can DM us. Um, so if you already love Flux, uh, we'd love to just give a shout out. Like if you haven't give us, given us a get up star, um, you know, we don't really like drive these that much, but stars really help so if you or the people you know are been using flux and love it um, we definitely appreciate it um, and we'll be sharing these other links with everybody um, if you don't know them already on the different places that we engage with the community um, all right so um, we'll switch gears to going through the details of this extension um, and just a reminder for people who I noticed some people just joined a little bit later. So today's talk is primarily to share um, this way of using Flux within Microsoft's Visual Studio Code. Um, today's talk is primarily focused for people who are already familiar with Flux and GitOps. Um, and we'd really love to have um, your feedback on how it is. We'd love to have you be excited about it and tell your friends. Um, if you're not excited about it, we'd love to get your feedback on how to improve. And, and if you are absolutely brand new to Flux and GitOps, um, this will be fairly intermediate to advanced. And um, we will have future talks to explain more of the basics and how you can get started on this beautiful GitOps journey um, through VS Code if you already use it. Uh, so with that. I will hand it over to Kingan. Great, thank you for the introduction. Make sure I'm sharing the right screen here. Okay, um, here's my slides, great. I only have a few slides. Uh, it's not gonna be our typical workshop format as, as we know. Uh, we've uh, got a new thing to show. And uh, so hopefully you all already know me, but here's me. Um, I'm Kingdon, and um, here's our agenda slide. Uh, there's really not very many slides. I just wanted uh, to have an agenda so that you all know what's coming. Um, so we're going to start with a little demo of what it's actually like to use the extension with Flux. Uh, we're going to push some changes. We're going to see them deployed. Then we're going to come back and look at how do we install this. Uh, since it's a pre-release extension and it's not in the marketplace, there's some um, extra steps to install it. If you are interested in trying this out, we'd like to get it into the marketplace soon. Uh, but we, we need feedback. Uh, we think there are still some things that need improvement. Um, and uh, we're going to try to show also what's the experience like for new users. Um, and as we get our feedback, we can dive a little bit deeper into the features and show how it works uh, some more. Uh, but I'm going to try to start with just a smooth uh, intro to how does it work. So here is uh, the extension at a glance. And uh, this, is, this is what we're going to start with is the editor and see exactly how does this work. So I've already got a cluster running. Um, I've got it connected to some things here. We've got a, an application is already running here. So you can see we've got pod info. Uh, and if you're 
Um, I haven't had lunch yet. <laughs> I apologize. Um, here's our editor and here's our GitOps extension. And here are our manifests from our uh, clone repo uh, already bootstrapped with the application in it and some other things uh, to support that. I don't need this one open, okay, or that one. All right, so we're gonna go in and make a change to our application, which is actually in a separate repo. So we've got a separate uh, editor window for that. And it's a Helm release. Uh, we're installing pod info through Helm with Git. We're just gonna change the logo image to see how this deploys and what it's like, what the experience is like. So I'm gonna do a save here and commit my change and then push it up. Let's take a look at the diff here so we can see what we did. And let's go back to the extension and see if we can catch it in the middle of the deploy. Okay, well, it is deployed now, so we're a little too late for that, but here's our pod info helm release. Uh, as you can see, if you click on these things, they pop up in a separate window. This is the status from the cluster. Uh, you can tell that because it has a lot more detail than the manifest we just edited. Maybe you couldn't tell that. I might have moved too quickly here, but uh, including the status information down here. Um, so let's do another change here. Uh, we're going to break it. And we'll let, let uh, Helm prevent us from breaking things. So Helm is, this is pod info. If you're not familiar with this app already, it's got lots of ways that you can break it intentionally so that you can see the behavior and um, see the reliability of, of Flux and the Helm controller and how uh, they prevent you from causing harm in, in certain scenarios like this one. So um, we're gonna go in and, and see what's changing. It's gonna take a second to pick up the change because this is GitOps and there's a reconciling interval. All right, our Helm release is deploying now. And we did a little mouse over there to see the status. So you can see it's progressing. And it's gonna take a minute to fail. Um, we will see that it fails through the notification pipeline here that I also have set up. Uh, and I've set this up just to emphasize that the editor extension itself doesn't really pop up notifications. You might like uh, to know when your deployment succeeded or failed, and you probably don't want to uh, have to click refresh to find out. Uh, so events and notifications are, are currently the best way for us to surface that information. So if we look at this Helm release, it's got a timeout of one minute. We should see it failing pretty quickly now. All right, and we got our Helm upgrade failed message here with the details about what failed. So this is the basic experience of using the editor extension. Uh, and, and we might as well fix it while we're here. Let's go back and make another change. And we'll fix it. Uh, before I commit this, let's look and see, just so you can see the app is still online. Uh, if we were to pull up the pod status, we could see that there are some pods hanging out in unhealthy state, but they haven't taken over. Uh, the release is still healthy, even though the release is not healthy. And we're just going to push a fix for this issue. It should pick it up really quickly. So in a minute, we're going to pause for questions. Uh, you see, it did 
it did pick up the change and it deployed it successfully. Go to our notifications, we can see that it did succeed. Uh, notifications are a little bit out of order today. I'm not sure why, but that's okay. So uh, that's, that's in a nutshell how it works. Oh, I missed this demo slide here, but so uh, I want to talk about the goals a little bit before we move on to the next part. Um, probably uh, most of you who are here today, if you're Flux users, you're aware of this pain point that there is really no Flux UI. And that's the main goal of this extension is to address that pain point. Uh, we'd also like to be able to surface information when things break in the editor so that you can uh, avoid context switches that you might not need uh, if, if the information was a little bit more accessible. And also we'd like to help users uh, adopt VS Code in general. Uh, if, if you're not aware, there are a lot of nice features in VS Code like auto-completing and open API validation of YAML that they play very well with Flux. Uh, and if you're not using an IDE right now, you might wanna think about it. Um, this, the overall goal is to increase your development velocity and improve your metrics. So reducing context switches does that by um, uh, helping you avoid uh, the brain drain when you have to switch from your editor to your terminal and check the status and all the different things. Uh, you should be able to see that as easily as possible. And so there's a list of non-goals on the side here um, to sort of help understand why the monitoring uh, is, um, well, what, what exactly is it that we're not doing we're not building a monitoring solution for Flux into the editor. Um, we're not trying to completely replace the CLI. There is still a CLI under the hood and we also still need the CLI for some use cases like Bootstrap for now. Um, and uh, we, we also uh, aren't really sold on the idea that there should be any sort of interruptions or pop-ups in the editor. Uh, I think that might kill the joy of the thing. So, um, Unless, unless it's in the flow of, I've just asked for this deploy and it's failed, I don't think that the editor is, is the right place for that. So we do still want you to engage with the monitoring that you can use in Flux. Uh, and and uh, we'd like for this to be an additive, uh, useful thing for your, your Flux experience. Uh, and of course, these are the GitOps principles. You're probably familiar with these already. I'm only showing them because I want to to emphasize that the goals of GitOps are the same goals of this extension and Flux. So, um, so there are some goals of today's workshop. I would like to have uh, folks try this out if you're willing. If you have a cluster that you're uh, able to test on, or if you uh, you don't, I have a repo here that you don't actually need to use this repo. You can use it with your own repo and your own cluster. Um, like to get some feedback, maybe at this stage before you've tried it, uh, if, if you um, are interested in trying it or whether you would consider trying this. Um, I'm gonna move on to the next step and you're welcome to submit some feedback uh, in the chat, uh, but I expect the feedback will grow as we get deeper into the demo. Um, and uh, if you have questions, we'd like to answer them. And if there are uh, tutorials that we can share that will help you advance on your journey with Flux, I'd like to uh, make that a goal of this session as well. Uh, so these are the only controllers we're really engaging today. Uh, this All right, I was gonna jump in if you, sure. did you wanna wait to the end for a question or? Um, well, if we have any good questions, we can start with them now. Should we? There's, there's just primarily one. One I, one I kind of answered. Um, but uh, what Kubernetes are you using with this extension? That's a great question. I've been iterating on this demo for a little while, and I'm using Kind today. Um, in earlier versions of this demo, I had more features enabled, and it was a little bit overwhelming and the time constraints. Um, I wanted to use something that was a little bit more accessible. So this demo is using kind right now. And I have set up the notifications um, through the notification controller so that we can get some of the events that we need. Uh, but all of this is possible in any Kubernetes cluster, kind or otherwise. Um, and great. Um, so another was, um, you know, sort of what 
we're using day to day. So I was sort of answering in the chat that um, we've got Pinky, for example, on our team who has been active VS Code user, and there's some of us um, developing. Like I, I know you're um, learning as we go. So um, um, yeah, we're kind of learning the benefits as well, but obviously working very closely with actual VS Code users so that you know we create a, a great user experience. Um, so with that, I think um, if you can bear with us with just one more poll question, we will put a quick poll question out there. Thanks for everybody for answering, but we'll see um, which of you um, already uses VS Code today because that would be really helpful for us. So that'll be our only other uh, poll question. So um, other ones, I think we're good with questions. So yes, as Kingdon mentioned, you know this is still in very much development, and that's why um, uh, we'd love for you to go and install it. And it's um, there are a couple of steps, so um, bear with us. And um, thanks for following the rest of this. And Kingdon will show you how. Yeah. So we're gonna. Um dump out my editor configuration now. We're gonna close down VS Code. We're gonna shut down the cluster. We're gonna start over from scratch here uh, so that we can see exactly what's going on. So you can see, um, I'm gonna need a terminal for this briefly since I closed the editor. I have a script to delete everything from my VS Code uh, and I'm going to Capture these settings so we get my nice fonts back. And we start it again. Um, bear with me for a moment. This is just a little bit of housekeeping stuff. If you didn't know that there's a uh, JSON view for the settings, this is really handy. Look at that. Okay. And I'll be back with this in a second. Okay, so we have a few. Um, Points to highlight, since this extension is in pre-release, uh, you have to go and download it in order to install it. So go to this weaveworks slash VS Code GitOps Tools page, uh, start here, and go down to the releases. And uh, these, these steps are all detailed in the readme at the very bottom. Uh, but if you go and download this, this is the latest release, 0.19.2. And here's where I was mentioning that it's documented how to do this. Uh, we're going to go back into the code editor. And then we're going to go to the extensions pane and we're going to choose this install from v6. So I've downloaded twice here. Uh, we'll just take the old one. That's fine. It's the same file. And you can see it installs a couple of uh, dependencies if you didn't already have the Kubernetes plugin and the YAML plugin. Uh, I'm going to do one more thing in the terminal here. I'm going to remove my flux binary because I uh, would like to show how this works for new users. So, and we're going to kind delete cluster. Also, I said that. So there's a kind config here. It's really minimal. It just forwards port 80 and 443 so that we can get to our deployment through the ingress controller once it starts. And then I'm going to close out of my terminal window and we're going to go back to the editor and do the rest in the editor. Okay. All right, so here's our extension. Like I said, the first thing it does is it checks to see if we have Flux installed, which we no longer do. So I'm going to click this to install Flux. Um, if you are already using Flux through Homebrew or another mechanism that will keep Flux up to date, you don't you don't experience this workflow at all. But that's fine. Okay, and it's found our Kubernetes cluster here, and it's presented us with some options. Let's get this screen a little bigger and get some. Uh, here, we'll get out of here. Okay, so there are a few ways to install Flux on here, and we're going to start with this. We're going to push enable GitOps. What this is doing under the hood, if you're familiar with Flux install, that's what it's doing. Uh, it just runs Flux install. Um, so this is not exactly great. 
Uh, this is something we'd like to improve. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how yet. Uh, and this seems to get us most of the way there. It's okay for disposable clusters, which may or may not be how most people are using this. But um, again, that's another step that you won't see if you already are using Flux. So we've got the controllers up and running now, and we can see that. We can see that we have no sources. Like I said, this is not a bootstrapped installation. This is just Flux install. Okay, so we're going to take our already bootstrapped instance of Flux and we're going to install it back onto the cluster. We're just gonna cube cuddle apply um, our GOTK sync pretty much. And then we're gonna let Flux take over like it would normally do after bootstrap. We could run bootstrap at this point too. Um, either way will work. So let's make sure we uh, know where this repo is for everyone who's trying to follow along. So we've got the pod info repo and there's one more repo, this GitHub actions demo where we're in a subfolder not this subfolder, we're in clusters kind kind. Okay, so this is where we are. And I'm actually working on a fork of this repo. So if you wanna go ahead and fork this repo to try along, you're welcome to do that or you're welcome to use any other repo that you have. Uh, so we're, we're gonna open that folder. Uh, we can do that through here. We get a new window. Toss this one. And we're going to go in and find our flux system. And we're going to run customize build since we've got some things customized in here. I want this to go smoothly and fast. So there are some defaults that have been adjusted. All right. I'm gonna do one more thing off screen. I've got a secret so that the, um, sorry, so that the notifications will work. So here we've got this secrets customization. We've got our Git repositories are starting to sync. And this, the secrets, I'm just gonna call this one out because there's an error in here, secret SOPS GPG not found. We weren't fast enough. It'll, it'll get there in a minute. Um, so all of these are reconciling in a loop and the loops are set deliberately short so that we can progress through the demo quickly. Um, let's see how we're doing. Okay, Ingress is installing. Let's see if we can see any pods. What namespace do we need to be in? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna watch pod info come up. So pod info is gonna wait for ingress to be totally ready, which it is now. And now pod info is coming online. And now it's running and it should be any moment now ready here. Great. Just like it was before, we tore down our cluster. And now I think everything should show up as ready. Great. Okay. So this is sort of what the experience is like if you were uh, doing disaster recovery on your dev cluster, for example. Uh, this is a great workflow to do when you want to prove that you can bring your infrastructure back to the state that it was in. Um, so let's close out of this terminal. We'll go back and edit some files. Uh, we need another terminal. We need another window for our um, pod info. Here we go. So that we can make changes in here. So what I thought we would do next, uh, maybe we'll switch since I have two versions of the pod info to play in here. We can take a look at them and see how this is set up exactly. Uh, if there are questions, we can start with questions again.
I see um, one good yes. question here. I've answered a whole bunch, but I'll, I'll give a good summary. I really appreciate all the various questions. Um, kind of going back, one person asked, um, you know, will, be, will we be building this for GoLand users in the future? And I said, absolutely, that's in the roadmap. We definitely have GoLand users among our Flux maintainers. In fact, I think we were just chatting about some people who were excited about it um, the other day. Um, and then uh, just to share, we record all these talks for our OOBs. Um, after this, you'll get an email with links um, and uh, you'll be able to see all the other fantastic talks that we have in these various areas on the YouTube channel. So hopefully those resources are helpful. I also added the link to the, this GitHub project um, in case people didn't catch that. Um, and then there was a question about, you know, how we're gonna tie this with the um, Kubernetes extension for VS Code. And yeah, we are working very closely with the various teams um, who are in the VS Code team at, at Microsoft. So we're hoping to learn more from them. So more to come in that area. Uh, and then the most recent one, um, oh yeah, and the questions about links. So we'll be sharing that. So just a summary of the various questions and comments that, come, that have come through, we really appreciate it. Um, and just to give an update on the poll, um, I appreciate that um, we have a seem to have a really nice cross section of existing Flux users and existing um, Visual Studio Code users overall. So um, we really appreciate that you came because you're exactly the people we want to talk to to see um, if you get excited about this or not. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the that's the overview. Okay, um, so uh, we've seen how to install the extension. Um, I'm interested to see if anybody has any impressions they'd like to share. Um, and as we, uh, let's see, we've gone through, I think all of these points already. We haven't looked at uh, the, well, we saw the command palette at one point. Let's see, uh, I, I'd really like to highlight some of the features of VS Code. Um, especially uh, syntax completion. Um, I'm not exactly sure that I'm using it correctly, but uh, as, as we mentioned, I'm, I'm kind of new at VS Code uh, and that brings its own set of challenges, but also benefits. Um, I'm, I'm less desensitized to the things that might be a little bit weird. Um, I don't wanna prejudice anyone's feedback though. So I'd really like uh, if there's anyone who has anything to share uh, before I go into more detail about what we might have on the roadmap for future development or um, anything else, um, or we can just keep on moving. Yeah, yeah, we would love, um, uh, you know, either you think about it and you email us later, or if you have any immediate thoughts, like especially, um, you know, if you're an active user of, it seems for the most part, Flux and um, VS Code, is this something that you think you'll try out today? And, you know, what ways do you think it would help you be productive? As King did mention, we are very dedicated to ensuring that people's work lives are smoother, easier, um, and improve in velocity. Uh, so with that, we have a couple of things. Um, all right, someone just ex installed the extension and tried it. Um, works out of the box and looks great so far. Thank you so much. Um, and another one, if you open a manifest and it is editable, and if you save it, it will create a file on disk. Since you can't edit manifests, manifests from the extension, it would be nice if the files were non-editable. Is that possible? Great question. That is a good point. And I think that, um, so we talked about the Kubernetes extension a little bit. Uh, this was the first feedback that I had when I, uh, so I, I did not develop this extension. Um, this to me uh, seemed like not a great experience, but it's actually what the Kubernetes extension does. So we depend on the Kubernetes extension uh, in some places. And um, I agree that this, this is probably one of the first things we'll change um, for various reasons. Um, but yes, I see what you're saying. If I go into this manifest and I've got it here, uh, if I click save, I'm going to get a file in my repo uh, that doesn't correspond to any path of a customization. It's not, this part is not a great experience. I agree with that 100%. All right. 
Yeah, I think the follow up comment was, uh, it's already replacing my own watch flux script. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah, so we, um, you know, we didn't intend this to be a workshop where people followed along. We hope that it would be, a, um, you know, concise recording where you can do it later. So it's very exciting to see people had already followed along and um, got it installed. Um, otherwise, overall, anyone else who, you know, maybe is an active VS Code user, um, you know, what are, uh, as I, I put in the comment, we, we have people on our team um, who are VS Code users, so we're actively working with them to make sure we provide the right user experience. We're also working with a team at Microsoft, um, but some of us working on the core components are a little bit more on the Flux side. So if there's anything in particular that you know you just love about using VS Code, and it would make it even better if the Flux extension worked really well with that, that would be great. Um, another comment, I like how easy it is now to suspend or reconcile a customization. Yes, that is a cool thing. I was looking at the little right hand there, yeah. Yeah, there's lots of things you'll find in here if you right click, like for example, uh, you can run flux trace on a resource. Um, I'd like to know what created this Git repository all the way down. Uh, so here we can see that it's a Git repository called pod info in the flux system namespace. And that there's some information duplicated here with what you can see uh, if you mouse over this. Okay. And then as we scroll up, we can see that it came from pod info customization and a Git repository that that came from. And you can also resume from here. Yes, great. Awesome. Um, and then there's a question, how would it work for large workloads? For example, a thousand plus tenants, each running 15 to 20 microservices. That's a good question. Uh, so there is uh, a little bit of a question about who this extension targets. Um, and one of the issues is that in order to get the full experience, you need to have cluster admin uh, because in order to reach into the Flux system namespace and, and see these things. Um, so there are some things that may still change. Uh, we haven't tested this on a cluster with thousands of customizations, so I don't know the answer uh, to be totally forthright, um, but um, We'd love it if you can try it out and, and let us know if you have a cluster that you're comfortable doing that with. Um, my expectation is it would be pretty difficult to find what you're looking for. But on the other hand, um, we'd like to test this with uh, our back restricted users a little bit deeper to see, well, what is your experience like, assuming that you don't have access to the Flux system namespace and you have access to a limited set of resources uh, you should see those resources, and this this spans across all of the namespaces that you have access to. Uh, so that's my expectation: is that users wouldn't probably wouldn't have access to production clusters with uh, cluster admin and access to all of the namespaces if it was thousands of namespaces. But um, I'm not I'm not the boss. I don't know how people are really going to use this. So. I'm interested to hear your experience if you try it out. Yeah, and that's a great problem for us to have. <laughs> we we would love we would love to hear back. Um, and so speaking of feedback, um, yeah, Ravi asked, um, you know, what's the best way to give feedback? Um, you can join us on Slack or whatever. But uh, as I mentioned, um, you'll all get an email with various links, and if you respond to that email, it'll come to me. So if that's the easiest way to um, give immediate feedback, I'm happy to take that and and share that with the team. So. Um, whatever works easiest for you. Um, I hope that's a good path. Um, and then there's a little bit of a continued thread from the previous comments. Um, because of the terminal output, it quote unquote teaches what you can do with the CLI. So continued feedback, I really appreciate that. Um, and then one person asked, can it really replace uh, the Weave GitOps uh, product that we had mentioned earlier that uh, is our WeaveWorks product built on 
uh, flux. Um, well, that's what we're really excited to um, explore, right? Is so just I, I put there in the slide, right? Uh, it got published as a WeaveWorks extension, um, but it's really a Flux extension. So um, just to be completely transparent. So, but in the future, right? Like we are actively excited in building this product that is built on Flux. You know, we really think that um, there's a, a, a use case and, 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 a, and a community of people who can go up and running and be successful with Flux. Um, and then reminder that, you know, core aspects of Weave GitOps are free and open source as well. So we really think that there's a whole different contingent of people who, um, you know, maybe they're new and they'll get into like decision fatigue and trying to make a lot of, um, you know, do a lot of research and figure things out. And Weave GitOps is perfect for that, like literally in, 30 minutes, you can kind of get flux up and running and all these other things sort of built around it so that you have something real to work with and then you can start, you know, learning and figuring out what works for you. Um, so all of our extensions um, are very much part of that. So um, our developer experience team, we work with our engineering team to ensure that anything that works with flux, like an extension has to work with we've GitOps, you know, because if you decide to upgrade or what have you, you know, we want to make sure everybody's as successful as possible. So um, I really appreciate the question. And absolutely, we are dedicated to everybody's positive user experience. Um, there is a comment, uh, love that the intent is to have the missing flux UI experience in dev ID. Um, yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't want to call it like this, this missing experience, you know, what we're looking for and um, a reminder, because uh, we were talking about Weave GitOps, you know, Weave GitOps does have um, a UI and it's, you know, supported by an engineering org. Um, it's free and open source. So definitely you should check that out um, if you're using Flux. Um, but, you know, the history again is that there's just security is our absolute number one priority for Flux and embedding the UI within the core code um, creates a lot of security vulnerabilities and that's why it's by design. And so an ID is just sort of one form of, um, you know, seeing what, what kind of use cases people have, like in what ways are they going to be the most successful um, and minimize context switching, such as we said. So I don't know if it's necessarily a placement, it's just one of the many paths that we hope um, will be good for people and, and let us know. Um, so another question, currently customizations and Helm releases are grouped under workloads. Was this a deliberate choice or is there a case for showing them separately? Great question. Yeah, I can't say for sure whether it's a deliberate choice. I think the intention is uh, to group like with like. And so these are uh, applier resources that actually affect the cluster. And these are uh, sources that just sink in something from the outside. So. Um, the separation is all the way through Flux itself. The sources are in a common API. That's the sources API and the workloads. Well, they're not grouped together. Uh, but I think, I think that we're wary of having too many um, tree views. Uh, it might be difficult if you have a lot of customizations and Helm releases to find. So that, that's good feedback. I'm, uh, and I'm going to take all of your feedback at, uh, from today, everyone who's submitting a comment. And, and go over it later as well. Um, and also you're welcome to submit issues or talk to me on Slack. If you have more feedback after the talk, uh, we have, uh, I'm, I'm actively developing this extension with the help of some other folks. And uh, so, so we're really interested in any direct feedback that might block you from using this or might improve the user experience overall. Um, yep, please. absolutely. Yeah. Um, and of course, uh, I shared the link and it'll be shared again to the um, GitHub page. So um, I had shared earlier, you can respond to the email if you have thoughts, but of course the uh, usual path is you can post issues or um, add comments. So definitely um, that's our, our most common route. So we appreciate the very active engagement. Um, Kingdon, did you wanna, um, uh, wrap up through by looking at some of the roadmap? Yes. Um, I actually don't have a roadmap slide. I thought about creating one and I think- Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I'm I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I, no, I thought I, that the um, so last I have, slide- I have carried. some ideas for what we can do to improve this, uh, but we haven't quite formulated the roadmap for the next okay. release. We're going to include a roadmap 
with the 0 0.20 release. Uh, so the 0 0.19.2 release just came out this morning. Um, and the main focus is on usability to make sure that if there are crash bugs or um, hangs or freezes anywhere, uh, we've already fixed a lot of those issues in, in the last few releases. And um, we're looking for anything else like that uh, as with the highest priority. And then I think the next major issue that we'd like to tackle after that is we'd like to make it a little bit more uh, reactive or responsive. So you might have seen me click refresh a couple of times and you see it doesn't refresh on its own. Um, we're not 100% sure whether these features will fit into the VS Code extension model. Uh, like I said, VS Code is not designed um, so that you can accidentally install a Bitcoin miner extension. Those things are prohibited by the design of the API. So uh, we think there might be more that we can do. I think that the Kubernetes extension is a good example of, of that, and it has some of those features baked in. Um, so that's one of our early targets for uh, what we'd like to do next. And of course, getting this into the marketplace is a priority. Uh, that, that might be the highest priority above those issues. Um, we have to fix any latent usability issues that are uh, obvious bugs. We don't want to get a bad rating when this goes in the marketplace. So if you notice anything like that and you don't see an issue open for it, please do highlight it and point it out to me. Um, but uh, we're really proud of what we built and we think that this is going to be useful for people. Uh, so please do check it out if you haven't already. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the, that's the nerve wracking part of the marketplace, right? Like you don't want to be dead on arrival with uh, bad scores. And that's why we're taking this period very seriously. And we really, really appreciate that you've come. Um, so actually, there's tons more in the chat. So maybe we can address those. Um, another feedback item would be nice if you could add kubeconfig, uh, minor non-standard locations. Noted. That's good. Um, and a question, how stable do you consider the extension to be? I'm sure people managing our clusters would be glad to switch from CLI to VS Code extension. Um, so yes, this is exactly a process of making it um, as stable as possible. Um, we've got some of our engineers in the audience as well um, who are helping to test and um, are doing bug fixes. I don't know, Kingdon, I don't wanna put you on the spot, but. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, one of our release goals for an upcoming minor release is to have a full end-to-end -end test suite where we test this uh, programmatically in, in pull requests for all of the environments that it runs on. So there should be an end-to-end -end test for the Mac OS version and another for Windows and another for Linux. And uh, we've got a few tests already, but the testing is somewhat limited for now. Uh, we're mostly doing exploratory testing and, and that's still bearing fruit. So uh, as we find more issues, we're uh, trying to cover them with tests. Uh, we do value stability probably the most highly out of everything. And that includes not breaking people's existing workflows, uh, but it is pre-release. So there is a possibility that we will have breaking changes. Yeah. Um, and another question basically the same, you know, is this safe for use in production? Um, and so as you noted, right? Yeah, if there are breaking changes, it might change the setup. But in terms of Flux itself, as far as we know, like there's no danger that something in VS Code would trigger something. Not, not that we can think of. No, we've, yeah. it's, it's a thin veneer over Flux. So Flux itself is still doing all of the heavy lifting and Flux is the star of the show here. Yes, absolutely. Um, so yeah, um, I hope that this intrigued you enough to tell your friends <laughs> to help spread the word. Um, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning, um, you know, we wanted to run this with you, mostly Flux users, because um, you know, it's one thing for people to discover this and say, oh, I already use both. Great. Hopefully it makes you more productive. It's a whole nother world um, if people who are out in the wider world of VS Code users who are like, oh, what's this thing? I think I vaguely heard of GitOps. And you know, if they install it, uh, as you all know, right, Flux is uh, quite uh, an advanced project. So um, it's really on me. I I'm I really prioritizing to make sure that we do everything we can so that those people don't just go, I have no idea what I'm looking at and then like walk away in the first 30 minutes, right? So 
um, if any of you maybe work with people in your companies who you know are kind of more on the new side but um, maybe would be wanting to inch their way to learn a little bit more about GitOps and Flux. Um, you know, any feedback you have there is sort of more broadly on how to bring people gently in if they were to discover um, Flux for the first time through something like this. Um, you know, we would love your feedback because we are, uh, Kingdon and I will be working on tons and tons of documentation so that it pops up within the editor and just sort of says, hello, <laughs> hello, new user. Welcome to the world of GitOps. Hopefully we can explain this to you in a way that's um, a little bit more um, beginner friendly because as as um, Kingdon's showing right here, right? Right now we just pull in the regular documentation and certainly we have core concepts and stuff, but um, we think that people who usually come to us at least, you know, have are like you, right? They have general knowledge about Kubernetes or the cloud native space, but for a lot of people who will become more and more like absolute beginners, we still wanna to try to find a happy path and that's what we're working on. Thank you. Yes. So thank you everybody for joining. I think we're basically at time, um, like gone over the 45 minutes, which is the usual uh, extended target. I cannot thank you all enough for, first of all, so many of you have joined and you've stayed to the end. That's what's really exciting. You know, like really basically no drop-offs. Um, you're engaged to questions and feedback and some of you even installed it, which was well beyond what we expected. Um, we really appreciate your time. And yes, we're gonna be working very hard to make this successful and available in the marketplace. So if anything comes up later or if you're chatting with others and. Um, you think of other things again, you know, in GitHub issues, in the email to me, any other way. We are happy to, um, can't wait to use, can't wait to use it. Thank you so much. Can't wait to um, uh, use your feedback and improve this. So thanks again to Stacy for organizing this and the wonderful um, most recent spring series of our Weave Online User Group. Uh, if you're brand new, again, welcome, and you'll get the links to all the other fantastic videos that we have in our YouTube channel. Uh, and thanks to Kingdon and the other engineers who joined us today um, for working on this and we'll keep improving it. So thanks Kingdon on your talk. Yeah, thank you. And thanks everyone. Cool. See you. <laughs>